Okay guys, check it out. We are jumping in midstream here on a medical management use case for the application domain intelligence framework that I've been showing you guys in this big series. This is super powerful and can do things way beyond what a traditional decision tree can do. In fact, you can automate entire workflows and do dynamic decision support systems using this programming. If you have a database application in a very complex environment like manufacturing or medicine or many other environments where there are complex workflows, ADI is for you. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our application domain intelligence playlist with Microsoft Access and sit back and relax because there's no work today we are just going to be doing a demo that's right today we are going to be doing a demo of a medical management uh, protocol uh, which is a good use case for something uh, like the adi framework uh, it takes us through a complicated set of decisions and processes with things like decisions and loopbacks uh, in order to confirm users' input and to output them at different outcomes uh, from our decision network. And so what we're doing today is we're going to go through a sepsis management protocol and we're going to demonstrate that using the ADI framework. Let's get to it. Want to see more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay guys, in this series we did some simple programming that used nodes like this one to allow us to have decision networks kind of like this one or even more complex patterns like this one so that we can program intelligence for a particular domain like medical or manufacturing so that users have a useful interface that gives them good information. Furthermore, the logic for all of these decision networks can be maintained by a regular non-programming user given a simple form and some training. Now that we've completed the basics of ADI, let's go check out a real-world demo. Okay, check this out. I've got this file here that we have been using and I've copied it and renamed it to example medical procedure. Got this nice little picture that was created on mid-journey and I have no idea if it looks like a real medical instrument or not uh, but we have a title at the top and that's going to be important make sure to pay attention to that and I've got this manage button here and I've put in a list of different management programs that you might see in a hospital or something like that and I've programmed one of them according to instructions that I got from ChatGPT and here we are we are doing some sepsis management it says to evaluate the patient and uh, it asks if infection is present i believe that is if it appears to be present now notice at the top that the title is changing with our selections here and that's part of this process um, and you can see now we're going down into a tree you know did the laboratory tests indicate a positive result for infection and it did and so now we move on to evaluate for sepsis we're going to check some medical conditions here uh, or medical symptoms uh, criteria and we're going to choose some of these uh, according to the protocol that was generated here and so uh, there are four of these criteria and we are checking those out i have no idea what that means but uh, we'll say no and uh, our system can check it met two or more of the criteria and so that's going to move us to the next step in this process and so you can see we click ok and the title at the top is changed by our process that's actually an action inside of the a adi framework and now we're going to check for organ uh, dysfunction so uh, we're checking for hypotension here uh, we'll say no to that one lactate levels we'll say yes and then uh, altered mental status on the glasgow coma scale uh, we'll say yes to that so that's two out of three and you can see that triggers our signs of organ dysfunction being present and so it's going to push us into the next step which is severe sepsis or septic shock 
And so now we're going to initiate the sepsis management protocol. We'll administer some fluids here and then uh, start some broad spectrum antibiotics and we can click OK and then it asks some questions after that you know did hypotension persist after the fluids and uh, we can make a selection there and that's going to change where we go in the network we'll say yes and it says uh, start vasopressors uh, and maintain that uh, condition there and then uh, we get a notice to remeasure lactate levels within two hours and then we are asked if they stabilized or not um, so maybe they did, maybe they didn't, um, and at that point uh, we can make a decision. We'll say yes, they did. So that moves us into the next step here, which is uh, six of six reevaluation, and we uh, get a notice to continuously monitor. And then it, we get a question if they improved, and if they improved at that point, we exit out of our network here. It says continue current treatment as required but of course that's not the only place that we can exit out of the network uh, because there could be a million different ways that we could go through this so we could have a different outcome entirely if we start going through here again and so we could say no to infection present and it might dump us out saying just monitor them if they're, it doesn't look like they have it then you're done um, but it could exit out a different way if we start our process here and we go deeper into our network here, uh, perform laboratory tests, we could say, uh, did the laboratory test, even though it looked like they had an infection, we could get to the next step, which is actual tests. And if those return negative, then we could consider other diagnoses. And what that does is it does a loop back, back to the first step. Now notice at the top there, that the header went back to the first step and that was because that's part of the protocol. When we re-answer the question in the first step and we say no, that's where we exit from our network. And so that's a completely different outcome. So we can try again, we can jump back in, uh, we can do the evaluation and we can say yes, we see some kind of infection and so we're going to move on to laboratory tests. That takes us to step two. Did the laboratory tests uh, come back positive? We'll say yes. And now we're going on to step three, which is evaluating for sepsis. And we have to evaluate four criteria and two of them have to be yes in order for us to trigger. So we could say no, no, no. So it didn't meet any of the criteria. So that's going to uh, kick us out of our network at a different place uh, because none of the uh, criteria were met or you need two of them in order two out of four in order to be uh, passed to the next step so we could try again we can go into our uh, network here we can do perform laboratory tests we're on step two uh, they returned as positive um, so now we'll go to step three evaluate for sepsis and uh, we can uh, go through we'll say yes no, yes, yes, so we'll get three out of four this time, and uh, that's going to uh, be evaluated in our uh, ADI framework uh, according to a function we created, and uh, that's going to pass us on to step four, which is determining severity of sepsis. So here there are three, and so we have to meet at least one of three, I think it is, in the uh, protocol and so we'll choose at least one of those and uh, this is the uh, Glasgow coma scale we'll say no to that and uh, that says signs of organ dysfunction are present we're proceeding to sepsis management and that is step five of six note that the uh, the title has turned red that's part of the programming you can do in the tables as well and so here we go. So does hypotension persist after fluids? Uh, we'll say no and uh, we'll remeasure in two hours and see if the patient has stabilized. And here we can say no, they did not stabilize. Uh, so we've done all this management. They, they're not stabilizing. So this is where we go out, escalate to the ICU, consider advanced therapies, and we are out of this uh, network. That's the, the end there. And so, you know, continuing on, we can go through the, some of those same steps here. We can evaluate again. 
uh, we can say yes we've got some infection it looks like they've got infection so we'll do the laboratory tests and say yes to those we move on to step three evaluate we've got our four steps we need two of four so we'll do yes yes uh, no and uh, yes and then we'll do uh, meets two or more so it calculates that assess for signs of organ dysfunction we're going to go further in this time we're going to say yes um, you know they've definitely got something going on here uh, and uh, that's going to allow us to move to the next step which is uh, which is the severe sepsis or septic shock and uh, so now we're going to initiate our management protocol again and we're going to take a little bit of a different uh, route through there uh, so we're going to do our fluids and our antibiotics um, this time and uh, we'll say does hypotension persist after fluids we can say no we're going to remeasure uh, within two hours <clears throat> and then this time we'll say yes you know what they have stabilized um, and so that's going to kick us over to the or kick us up to the uh, re-evaluation and monitoring step uh, and we're going to continuously monitor and we'll check if they you know did they improve uh, and we can say uh, yes or no here and we can say you know what no they didn't improve and that's going to kick us back to step five now note the loop back again this is part of the protocol that you have to go back to step five and re redo this step here uh, severe sepsis and we can do all of those and we can say does hypotension persist we can say yes and that takes a different uh, route through there and uh, we are going to get to our stabilization step we'll say no they're not stabilizing and that kicks us back to the ICU which is one of the outcomes that we saw before. So note the loopback functionality much more capable and robust than say a decision tree and uh, that definitely makes it a much more powerful tool for you to use for getting domain intelligence into your applications and these can be programmed by your senior staff, your you know super domain experts can program this stuff either for training or for outcomes in cases where you've got staff who are not as knowledgeable and you might need to have these sort of training wheels for them in order to make decisions or to follow processes or to even just evaluate um, things like you know manufacturing processes or or medical processes there are literally a million different use cases for this kind of programming and I really wanted to bring this to Microsoft Access first because it is the platform on which I designed the ADI framework over 20 years ago now. And I have since used this kind of programming in many different environments and languages. And it has proved to be very, very handy. And you can do all kinds of things with it. And note that you are not constrained to using these sort of standard in input yes no you know boxes that we have here you can design your own pop-up boxes you don't even have to have pop-ups you can design the ADI framework to integrate into one screen it uses all these tables here that we did in this series if you haven't done this series yet make sure to go back and uh, learn all of the different programming and techniques that I show there so that you can build your own ADI framework in order to add application domain intelligence into your application. Need more resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.